that I wanna cover the most effective takedown in dealing with a larger, stronger opponent. And the essence of BJJ is how could a smaller, weaker opponent use leverage and technique to overcome a bigger, stronger attacker. If my attacker is, is much bigger, much stronger than me, I'm not hitting double legs. I'm not gonna be able to plow through his entire upper body, okay? It, it's just too much of a power disparity. I'm gonna attack, I'm gonna use my whole body to attack one of their legs. So, most people, most people in the standing position in Western countries are left leg lead. Okay, so we're gonna know that. So we're gonna have our opponent practice putting his left leg forward for this drill. You have to match same foot. If we're mirrored like this, you're not hitting this takedown, okay? Make sure you're matching same side foot. So if he's presenting the other foot, right, I'm gonna have to match that foot. But for now, I'm gonna practice in a way that'll be most beneficial because most people have their left foot lead. So I'm gonna practice with my right. Same exact setup as my double, okay? This setup is so effective, I use it for almost every single one of my takedown. It's the reach. You can reach with one hand, you can reach with both hands. All I have to do is get one of my appendages moving towards your face. Have a friend stand directly in front of you and do this, and do that to your face. Not only are you gonna blink, but you're gonna raise your hands up. Your hands are gonna start in motion, moving away from the place that I am attacking, and that's exactly what I want reach, get him, to, get him to react, and then step my foot as close to his lead foot or behind it. Here. I want to get my foot as close to his foot here or behind it. Somewhere in this vicinity. BJJ guys are super technical. They want to know within the centimeter, where should I be? Okay? For this position, as long as you're within this range, you're going to be fine. Step, get him to reach. I go low. I still level change. My hips are low. My chest is over my knee. My back hand wraps around and creates a gable grip. My hand is low around the bend of his knee. Think about leverage, okay? I wanna to go to the end of the teeter-totter where I have the most leverage. My head is up. I can feel his ribs. I can feel his ribs with my head, okay? I'm gonna use my whole body to get his weight off of this leg and onto that leg while I pull my elbows up and into me. So, his weight is on this leg, distributed evenly between both of them. I'm gonna stand him up. Look at my legs. Now look at my arms. Now look at my head. Once I have him here, now he's presented with the challenge of balancing on one leg. He has to try to fight my position, my attack, while balancing on one leg. Now the fight's in my favor. I'm going to lace my shoulder over top. You're gonna need, this is, this is how everybody teaches a, a single leg. They teach you to commit here. Look what just happened to my head position. This is called over committing. If I go hand to elbow here, now my chest is on his leg and my head's down by his hips and he can stuff my head, easily stuff my head. My head, I don't have the length in my arms to positionally keep my head at his ribs and therefore his weight off of me. Sorry. If I'm all the way down here, he can keep his weight, he can bend his upper body onto the top of my head and keep all of my weight here. Very hard to support that. I keep his weight, see, just from the mere position of my head, I'm not even pushing, just from the position of my head, I'm keeping his weight off of me. Now from here, I need to, not my chest, I need to have a gable grip so I can lace my shoulder over top of his femur. I'm basically on his hip dynamic tension. I'm pulling up on the knee, the knee's getting pulled in to my chest, and I'm lacing my shoulder down and over top. Now my head is going to push him back. He can feel this right now. Right now he is supporting all of his weight and all of my weight. I barely have any weight on my legs. I'm pushing all of my weight into the shoulder while I'm pulling up here. So there's this teeter motion. I'm pulling up here and pushing down here with my shoulder while my elbows are pulling everything in. I'm gonna take one teeny tiny step forward left leg, one teeny tiny step backwards with my right leg, and I'm gonna sit him to his butt. And I'm not going down with him, okay? I'm gonna sit him to his butt and stay on my feet. Now I can choose how I wanna enter. If I go down with him, he can keep you close, roll you off, create all these unnecessary scramble positions. You wanna let him drop. Now he's on the ground and you're on your feet. 
very good situation to be in in a street fight. So again, out of range, and to range here. I swear guys, this is how everyone does single legs in BJJ. Everyone does single legs like this. They get here and then they consider this a resting position. They, they think this is some kind of like small win. Like, oh, I got his leg, now I'm gonna hang out here. Now let's spend the next five minutes hanging out and fighting from here, wasting energy. I have to hold on to his leg, I'm overcommitted, and everyone does this, and they close their knees, thinking that's gonna do something. You're just, you're just cementing the position. This isn't a position I wanna hang out in. This is a transitory position. I'm only here for, a, for 0.1 seconds, so I can transition to a place where I put him on his butt. Do not hang out here. In the BJJ community, it is so, it's such a cultural standard to go hand to elbow and hang out here. Wasting energy. Finish quickly. From outside, reach in. This comes up, head position is ripped. Just from me doing that, just from me entering in, in position, it was very easy for me to move his weight. Almost effortless. Pulling the knee in, shoulder laced over top. Step, step. And as I step, 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 I clear a path to sit him on his butt. I think about a slide, a 45 degree angle. I'm using my shoulder to pressure him down onto his butt. This is a tricky position, okay? This, is, uh, this isn't something you pick up in an afternoon. All the teeny tiny little nuances of having my gable grip down at the bend of his knee, pulling it up into the body, lacing my shoulder over top. Getting really tight and comfortable here takes a little while, but it's worth the time. This is one of the most effective takedowns. The most effective takedown when it comes to attacking a larger opponent or defending yourself against a larger opponent. One last time, full speed. And look, we're getting a little wet. It's, it's early in the morning. It's not gonna kill you guys. It's not gonna kill you. There's no excuse to not learn wrestling. Like we're in tennis shoes. Everyone should have a couple takedowns in their back pocket. Here, reach, heat camouflages. I step and lower my level, elbows in. I didn't do this, I didn't go. My arms didn't windmill, okay? That's a really easy way to get your takedown stuffed. He's, gonna, he's just gonna snag double underhooks if I do that. If I come here and go, he's just gonna snag double unders. Any decent wrestler will do that. I fake, elbows in, fake, elbows in, retract. Fake, elbows in, right back out to here. Step up, weight off his leg, onto this leg. Now all his weight's off me. Lace my shoulder over top and how's that pressure? You can see that knee bend already. Ton of downward pressure. He wants to go down, so I'm gonna let him. Step, step, sit him to his butt, unlock my hands to here. Snatch single, snatch single leg takedown with a reach setup. 